I'm Dr. Chowdhury. Welcome to FSMB Spotlight. Our guest today is Dr. Claudette Dalton, an elected member of the Board of Directors of the FSMB. Dr. Dalton is a graduate of the University of Virginia School of Medicine, where she spent a number of years as Assistant Dean for Community-Based Medical Education. Her training in both anesthesiology and internal medicine was at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She has served as a member of the Virginia Board of Medicine, which she led in 2011, and was also vice chair of the ACCME, the Accreditation Council for Continuing Medical Education. You've been busy, Claudette. She's also currently an elected member of the board of the National Commission for the Certification of Physician Assistants, the NCCPA. Claudette, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Chowdhury. I'm honored to be here. Very good. So currently you serve as the chair of the FSMB's Ethics and Professionalism Committee, mm -hmm. and it's looking at a number of different areas. One of those areas was to review the uh, code of ethics of both the AMA and the AOA, uh, but it also has done other things. Tell us a little bit about that effort with the code of ethics of those two organizations and other things that it's working on. Okay. The AMA and the AOA have recently revised their codes of ethics. And the committee felt like we needed to review those uh, revisions in case anything um, I impacted our member boards who use the code of ethics in their statutory language. So that's a pretty big job. There's a whole lot to, especially the AMA code of ethics. So we probably won't finish that job this year. It'll all go into next year. And then we um, have spent a lot of time backing up the Resolution 16-1 from the 2016 annual meeting mm -hmm. about compounding. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me more about compounding. It's an issue that uh, there's an assumption that a lot of doctors know about it, but I suspect more specialists, particularly in gastroenterology and maybe allergy and immunology, know about it. What is it about compounding that uh, all physicians should know about, and why is your ethics committee looking at that? U.S. Pharmacopeia. Mm -hmm. has done uh, a scheduled revision of their chap chapters on compounding, 797 and 800. Okay. Some of those revisions have been um, viewed by the specialists as being um, onerous and uh, forcing them to, to have to put in isolation boxes or um, air airflow ch exchanges um, use more personal protective equipment, and all of those changes that they might be forced to do would be expensive and might impair access to care. Um, so we have dealt with both the USP and the FDA and some other related organizations on both their standards and their guidelines. But now the guidelines uh, that the USP has out right now have received so many uh, pieces of feedback from the specialists that we probably won't have another draft until late 2017 or 2018 before we will get back to that. Okay, very good. A related issue is the issue of kickbacks. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what that means and what it, that's all about. Well, there are three different I issues with kickbacks. Uh, the first one is that some compounding pharmacies have um, hired marketing uh, middlemen, and they have approached office practices, mostly the staff, but occasionally the physician or other prescribers, mm. and they have promised them bonuses if they will uh, prescribe through that pharmacy. A less physician-oriented issue with kickbacks is that, again, some compounding pharmacies have um, approached um, in the insurers and will change the physical concentrations of the ingredients in a medication to get higher reimbursement. And what that means is that some of that um, medication will cost thousands of dollars where you could buy it for mere dollars in, a, in your local drugstore. Related to that one is that some of those same groups don't actually physically change the ingredients, but they change the labels. Mm. Now those last two don't really affect physicians directly but they do impact the cost and the care of their patients. So we really wanted um, all of the state medical boards to be aware of these issues. And while we're not going to put out any specific action for them, we think that they should talk with their state pharmacy boards and um, see what the extent of the problem is in their um, state. 
So it sounds like it's one of the reasons we have healthcare costs increasing overall. Absolutely. What message would you give, granted that the committee has not completed its deliberations, what message would you give right now to physicians who are out in practice? They need to be aware that this problem exists and look at their own practice. They may not be aware that some of their staff maybe have been approached by these marketing folks. Uh, and if they do have it, since it, it, it violates all sorts of antitrust and fraud laws, and it might impact state practice acts as well. So it's important that the physicians are aware if it's happening in their practice, they need to stop it. And one of the members of the committee has reported that they've already got two investigations going in his state on his medical board uh, about these very issues. So it sounds like good advice to stay out of trouble. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Well, we wish you all the very best, Dr. Dalton, as you move forward with your Ethics and Professionalism Committee. And thank you for joining us for alerting us to some of these issues. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Stay well and see you next time.